We already had a look at the Arctic A35, a extremely silent cooler. It might not be the top line performer, but for a mid-range system, it will be hard to find something that is as competitive in terms of noise and performance and especially price. After that, we found out that Arctic likes to create miniatures, like the A13X, a cooler which looks exactly like an A35, just smaller. But did you know that we could potentially go even smaller Meet the Arctic Freezer 7X, a cooler so small it looks like it's it's a, a cooler for a wristwatch. So this is it, the smallest freaking thing I was able to find that is still counting as a tower cooler. Similarly to the cooler, the box of this thing also comes as a freaking miniature. Inside the box we will not find the usual stuff however. Here we will find special type of, oh no, actually the mounting hardware is so unspecial that I I was giggling a bit when I unpacked it, but we'll get to that in a minute. Something else that you will not find inside this box is any sort of thermal paste. This is due to Arctic already pre-applying some of the MX4 thermal paste directly onto the base of the cooler and just protecting it with a piece of plastic. But as we need to replace it for our benchmarks, there's just nothing left during the B-roll. Coming to the cooler itself, as we are already on the base, let's stay there. Here we will find the same direct touch copper base that Arctic used throughout the whole lineup. But unlike what we usually do, we will not complain about the kind of small size of this thing because it's, it's in fact already almost entirely covered with heat pipes, two to be exact. Yes, there are only two heat pipes transporting the heat from the base of this cooler up that 132.5 mm high single tower heatsink. And yes, you heard it right. 132 millimeter high heatsink cuteness. Compared to any other Arctic cooler, we can not only see that the design department is composed of a single dude pretending like he's working on something, but we can also start to admire the amount of ridiculous steps Arctic needed to undergo in order to make this thing so small while keeping it as a tower style cooler. But not everything changed, or at least I think so. The fan seems to be pretty much the same compared to the A13X. The 7X uses the same kind of 100mm diagonal fan spinning at 2000 rpm while being controlled over a 4-pin PVM header. However, although the specs seem to be identical, the current needed to make that happen seems to be different. 0.07 amps on the 7X and 0.09 amps on the A13X, though this can also just be a typo, we will probably never know. However, thanks to them being identical fans, we can now exactly observe how real estate of heatsink and amount of heat pipes will contribute to an overall cooler performance. But before getting there, let's take a quick look at compatibility and the installation mechanic, cause there is go it's going to be a bit interesting. If you are planning to go with the 7X on AMD platform, we are pretty much open game. AM4, AM3, FM2, FM1, whatever you want, but funnily enough, Arctic does make sure to splatter the support for the upcoming AM4 socket all over the place, so you can rest assured that this thing is future-proof. Although I highly doubt that you will want to use this on an on an AMD 7000. It's don't, no, I think it's not a good idea. Over on the blue side, we are allowed to go with a bit more. LGA 1700, 1200 and every 1150 to be exact. Unlike absolutely every Arctic cooler I've seen before, the 7X is completely back to the roots when you slap it on top of an AMD CPU. To get it going, we do not need to remove anything at all, just position it, make sure that these hooks are pointing inwards, press those retention brackets through them and tighten them up on both sides by screwing the screws on top. And a truly 2010 AMD experience. Nothing that I missed. Over on Intel's side, it's essentially the same thing, just with an extra step. First, we need to take that weird-ass retention bracket and position the end pieces either in the outer edge for LGA 1700 or press them in for anything else. Then just position it on top of your socket and press in those weird-ass retention pins. And from here, we can just repeat the same process that uh, should have disappeared years ago. Although I am not the biggest fan of that ancient AMD mounting mechanism, 
it is easy, it is cheap, it is small, and considering that the 7X is basically a cooler downscaled on absolutely every front, it's, it's understandable, plus uh, in my memory it was worse than it actually was, it wasn't that bad. But now let's get to the train wreck section of this video, the benchmarks. While letting the mini fan spin at its max rated 2000 RPM, it was able to keep the CPU at 67 degrees C. Hey, congratulations, you successfully managed to score the last spot. And you did so with quite the gap, I might add. On the noise to performance end, it just gets kind of worse. Here we got this graph. The black line being the Noctua NHL12S, a 70mm tall cooler, while the light blue one is the AMD Wrath and Prism, a 93mm high cooler. And if you are looking for the 7X, Good luck, because it's hidden all the way over here. Yes, unfortunately, this is what it looks like if a cooler can only survive with exactly a single fan setting, 100%. And while doing so, it managed to score the last point. Before you might draw any false conclusion on this cooler, you are right. Don't buy the cooler. It's a bad cooler. Or it's not necessarily a bad cooler, it's, it's just useless. To make one thing very clear, considering how thin, ridiculously small, and you know, two heat pipes, it is still a shock that it managed to finish the benchmark at all. However, there is just no use case for this cooler in my opinion. Let's start with the, the first use case, price. Sure, I can get this cooler for 18 euros, and that's an amazing price if you're on a very, very tight budget. But do you know what's even cheaper? For free. Because let's be honest, the type of CPU you are, you are able to, to cool with this thing will come with a free cooler anyway. And, and to add, it will probably do a better job. But my biggest problem with the, the price argument is the fact that you can get an A13X, a significantly better option. Mind you, the, the cooler we are talking about here is still not good, it is just a lot better than this one at the exact same price from the same company. That doesn't make any sense. Then the second argument you could go for is size. After all, the 7X is about 5mm smaller than the A13X. To that, I have to add, find me a case that only supports up to 133mm high coolers, but not 138. And if you already found that one existing case, explain to me why just not go with an L12S or a C14S or even a Darkrock TF4 and just remove the upper, upper fan, it will still outperform this. If size is an issue, going for a 7X doesn't make a lot of sense considering low profile options. And if price is not the reason, the size is not the reason, and the performance is definitely not the reason, then why the hell go for a, for a 7X? And that's basically my conclusion on this thing. Why the hell does it exist? Just go for a 13X, or take any C-shaped cooler, or you know, go, go for the free one that comes with your CPU. Oh yeah, kind of sad, but uh, also kind of expecting considering how small this thing actually is. But still, a huge thank you to Arctic for sending this miniature of a, of a cooler, although it wasn't able to travel very far on the benchmark chart. But it was fun to work with, it was fun to see that something this small actually exists. But as you are already here, maybe you want to keep watching, and in that case, have a look at our take on the A13X. It's a bit bigger, but it uh, traveled a lot further on our benchmark charts. On a side note, we also now have channel membership, so if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to start. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to pay the psychiatrist that I now will need due to that PTSD episode I got when I needed to reuse that 20 year old AMD mounting standard. I, I will never find my, my way back from that one. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.